Google should have easily won the AI race. Not only did they have more money, talent, experience, and computing power, Google literally invented the technology that powers every major AI model today. They had a massive head start, years ahead of OpenAI, Microsoft, and every competitor. And yet, they lost. Not only is ChatGPT dominating the AI world, Google's own AI products like Bard and Gemini have been complete disasters. Oh, looks like we had a little demo issue. Let me try one more time. Nope, uh-oh, looks, like, uh, looks like they're not with us. Google, the CEO, saying the failure of its AI-driven image generation feature is, quote, completely unacceptable. Google needs to shut down its AI chatbot, Gemini, immediately. And while Google is still trying to catch up, their own engineers are leaving, many of them joining the competition. So what really went wrong? How did the biggest AI powerhouse in the world the company that practically built modern AI, fall behind to a much smaller, newer startup. So let's go on a journey into the inner workings of Google and find out the truth. In 2017, something revolutionary happened inside Google's research labs. A team of eight researchers published a paper titled, Attention is All You Need, Introducing a New Network Architecture for Analyzing Text. It was the birth of Transformers, a breakthrough that would go on to power every major AI model today. Without this technology, there would be no ChatGPT, no Claude, no AI boom. In other words, Google invented the future. They had the blueprint, they had the talent, they had the resources. If any company was positioned to lead the AI revolution, it was Google, but they hesitated. Instead of turning their AI into a product, they kept it locked away in research labs. Why? because AI threatened Google's core business, search advertising, a $200 billion empire. A chatbot that gives direct answers could mean fewer people clicking on links. Fewer clicks meant fewer ads. Fewer ads meant less revenue. So they stalled, they analyzed, they debated. And while they did, their own talent walked away. All eight researchers who co-authored the paper left Google. Seven started their own AI companies, and one joined OpenAI. They knew what Google didn't. AI was the future. In 2021, Google finally unveiled Lambda, their AI language model. But instead of launching it as a real product, they turned it into a tech demo, making it role play as things like a planet or a paper airplane. While Google was stuck in endless debates, ChatGPT was born. Welcome to our first ever OpenAI Dev Day. Unlike Google, OpenAI had nothing to lose. They had no $200 billion search empire to protect. They had everything to gain. And in late 2022, OpenAI launched ChatGPT, a chatbot powered by the very transformer technology that Google had invented. And the world went crazy. In just five days, ChatGPT reached one million users, faster than any product in history. It wasn't just a cool demo, it was the future. And Google, they were caught completely off guard. In a rushed attempt to counter ChatGPT, Google unveiled Bard, their own AI chatbot. It was supposed to be Google's big comeback, their chance to prove they were still the kings of AI. But instead, it was a disaster. During its very first public demo, Bard made a critical mistake. It confidently claimed that the James Webb Space Telescope took the first ever photo of a planet outside our solar system. But that wasn't true, and people noticed. This wasn't some live Q&A mistake. It was a pre-recorded, edited promo video. Google had every opportunity to fact-check Bard's response and they still got it wrong. And the consequences? In just one day, Alphabet, Google's parent company, lost $100 billion in market value. That's 7.7% wiped out because of a single AI mistake. A pretty small number, but for a giant company like Google, that's unbelievable. ChatGPT had some flaws, but Bard was a joke. Even after the Bard disaster, Google continued to struggle in the AI race. They needed a win. So in December 2023, Google rebranded Bard as Gemini, promising a more powerful multimodal AI, one that could process text, images, and even video. This was supposed to be Google's redemption, their proof that they could not only compete with OpenAI, but lead the AI race. But instead, it was an even bigger disaster. From day one, Gemini was a mess. It failed twice during a live demo. Check my calendar and see if I'm free when she's coming to San Francisco this year. Gemini pulls relevant content from the image, connects with my calendar, and gives me the information I'm looking for. Oh, looks like we had a little demo issue. Let me try it one more time. Check my calendar and see if I'm free when she's coming to San Francisco this year. 
Let's see if the demo spirits are with us today. Nope, uh-oh. And it only got worse from there. Users quickly discovered hilariously terrible answers. One person asked why cheese wasn't sticking to pizza. Gemini suggested adding some glue. Where did it get this groundbreaking advice? A Reddit comment from 11 years ago. Then, Gemini listed the benefits of tobacco, including whitening teeth and increased alertness. One user even asked, how many rocks should I eat? Gemini answered, one small rock per day, claiming that rocks are a vital source of minerals and vitamins. Turns out, it pulled this from The Onion, a satirical news website. At this point, it wasn't just funny anymore, it was dangerous. And then came the controversy that broke the internet. Users noticed that Gemini refused to generate images of white people, stating that it cannot specify ethnicity or race. But when asked to generate images of a black family, it had no problem. And that wasn't the only issue. Gemini's image generation went completely off the rails. A black Viking, an Asian woman in a German World War II uniform, and even a female pope. Google's vice president quickly issued an apology. It's clear that this feature missed the mark. Some of the images generated are inaccurate or even offensive. We're grateful for users' feedback and are sorry the feature didn't work well, but it was too late. Google parent company Alphabet has lost $70 billion in market value over the past week or so after the unveiling of their artificial intelligence generated Oracle of the Spirit of the Age, Gemini. In just one day, Alphabet lost $70 billion in market value. And worse, they lost public trust. By this point, no one believed in Google's AI anymore. It had no filter, no verification, no reliability. While Google was struggling with Bard and Gemini, the competition wasn't waiting around. The AI race was no longer just about Google versus OpenAI. It had become a full-scale war between the biggest tech giants on the planet. If there was one company that saw the future of AI before Google did, it was Microsoft. In early 2023, Microsoft doubled down on OpenAI. In late January, Microsoft invested $10 billion into OpenAI, bringing their total stake in the company up to 49%. And they move fast. Bing Search, powered by ChatGPT. AI tools embedded into Microsoft Office. OpenAI's models, fully integrated into Azure. In one move, Microsoft positioned itself as the backbone of enterprise AI. Then came Amazon. While others were focused on OpenAI, Amazon made a different bet. They invested $4 billion into Anthropic, an AI company built by former OpenAI researchers. Their AI model, Claude, quickly became one of ChatGPT's biggest competitors. And then there was Meta. Instead of locking down their AI models, Meta did something completely different. They gave their AI away for free. With Llama 2, Meta open-sourced one of the most powerful AI models on the market, allowing developers to use and build on it without restrictions. And then came the real shock. A Chinese AI company entered the race. Now to the latest in the battle over AI, as the new chatbot DeepSeek, which was built in China, dominates here in the U.S. A new Chinese artificial intelligence tool is raising concerns from Silicon Valley to Wall Street this morning. It's called DeepSeek. What does that mean? Cheap AI. It became the most downloaded free app in the U.S. on Apple's App Store. DeepSeek. But they didn't just join the competition. They disrupted the entire playing field. With DeepSeek R1, they introduced an open-weight AI model, one that was cheaper to develop, freely accessible, and just as powerful as its Western rivals. For the first time, cutting-edge AI wasn't just controlled by Silicon Valley giants. The impact was immediate and brutal. Investors saw the rise of DeepSeek as a major threat to U.S. tech dominance. OpenAI, Microsoft, and NVIDIA stocks took a hit. For Google, it was even worse. Still recovering from Gemini's failures, Alphabet saw billions wiped from its market value as confidence in Google's AI leadership collapsed. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. Google was supposed to own AI. They had the best talent, the most advanced research, the computing power to push AI further than anyone else. Yet somehow, they fell behind. And the question is, how did this happen? How did a $2.3 trillion company, one of the most powerful tech giants in history, get outpaced by a much smaller competitor? To understand why Google fell behind, we need to take a step back. And this is Google Glass. Now, something that a lot of people ask when, you know, you go out and walk around with this thing on your face, a lot of people ask the same set of questions. 
At Loon, we're passionate about connecting people everywhere. There was a time when Google wasn't afraid to bet big. They were the company of moonshot projects, wild futuristic ideas that seemed impossible but had the potential to change everything. Google Glass, Google Wave, Project Loon, Google Fiber, Google Health. If there was a crazy idea, Google was willing to take the risk. And it made sense. Google was growing at a mind-blowing rate. They had seemingly unlimited money and a reputation for staying ahead of the curve. But then, everything changed. Most of these ambitious projects failed. Google Glass, a privacy disaster. Project Loon, too expensive to scale. Google Fiber, too difficult to expand. One by one, Google's big bets collapsed. And each failure came with a staggering price tag. Hundreds of millions, even billions. Investors started losing patience. The company got bigger, slower, and more cautious. And rather than looking toward the future, Google doubled down on what was already making money. For years, nearly all of Google's revenue came from one thing, advertising. Subscriptions and cloud services bring Google billions, but it's nothing compared to advertising. In 2023, advertising accounted for over 76% of Google's total revenue, pulling in more than $230 billion. And that was a problem. Because when ChatGPT arrived, everything changed. For the first time, people realized they didn't need to search the old way. They didn't need 10 blue links. They didn't need to scroll through websites filled with ads. ChatGPT could just give them the answer. And that was Google's worst nightmare. Because if AI could answer questions directly, that meant fewer searches, fewer clicks, and less ad revenue. And when three quarters of your business depends on ads, this wasn't just a problem. It was an existential crisis. Google had the technology to lead the AI revolution, but they also had too much to lose. Unlike OpenAI, which had no legacy business to protect, Google was trapped by its own success. If they fully embraced AI, they risked cannibalizing their own empire. So instead of going all in, they hesitated. They played it safe. They tried to balance AI innovation without disrupting their cash machine. Meanwhile, OpenAI and Microsoft had no such hesitation. Microsoft bet big on AI-powered search. They didn't care if it disrupted Bing, because Bing had nothing to lose. Google, on the other hand, had everything to lose. And in trying to protect what they had, they lost something even bigger, their leadership in AI. Google wasn't just losing the AI race to OpenAI and Microsoft. It was losing the ability to compete at all. Because behind the scenes, Google's biggest obstacle wasn't OpenAI. It was Google itself. In April 2024, Google CEO Sundar Pichai announced a major restructuring of the company's AI divisions. But this wasn't just some routine corporate reshuffle. It was an admission of failure. For years, Google's seven-layer management structure had been crippling its own AI development. Engineers weren't just separated from leadership. They were buried under a mountain of bureaucracy. Decisions had to pass through multiple levels of approval, which slowed down progress. Instead of one unified AI strategy, Google had multiple teams working on nearly identical projects, competing against each other rather than against OpenAI or Microsoft. The result? Wasted time, duplicated efforts, massive inefficiencies. Some reports showed that only 18 to 36% of AI projects actually delivered real, measurable results. While OpenAI and Microsoft operated like lean, fast-moving startups, Google's AI division looked more like a giant corporation tangled in its own red tape. But the problem wasn't just slow decision-making. Google's teams were structured like separate kingdoms, each focused on incremental improvements rather than bold, disruptive innovations. They weren't pushing AI forward. They were just maintaining what already existed. Compare that to OpenAI, where decisions were made quickly. AI models were tested and released rapidly, and failures were seen as learning opportunities rather than setbacks. Google's structure wasn't built for this kind of competition. And in the race for AI dominance, speed is everything. But Google's bureaucratic mess wasn't the only thing slowing them down. According to former Google CEO Eric Schmidt, there was another factor at play, remote work. When asked why OpenAI and Anthropic had taken the lead, Schmidt didn't hesitate. Google decided that work-life balance, going home early, and working from home was more important than winning. Startups like OpenAI weren't just ahead in technology. They were moving faster because their teams were working longer, harder, and with more urgency. Schmidt was clear. If you want to compete against the other startups, you're not going to let people work from home and only come in one day a week. Of course, Google wasn't fully remote. 
By 2022, they had shifted to a hybrid model, three days in the office, two days remote. But in an industry where speed is everything, even a slight delay can mean the difference between leading AI and playing catch up. While OpenAI and Anthropic were pushing out new AI models at breakneck speed, Google's hybrid work culture, combined with its bloated management structure, slowed them down even more. And in a race where the only thing that matters is who gets there first, Google was losing. Bureaucracy, slow decision-making, remote work. The result? Google started losing its top AI talent. For years, Google was home to some of the brightest minds in AI, the very researchers who pioneered the technology. But one by one, they started leaving. In 2023, Jeffrey Hinton, the godfather of AI, left Google, not to join a competitor, but to warn the world about the dangers of AI. When the man who helped create modern AI felt the need to step away, it spoke volumes. Then came Timnit Gebru, one of the world's top AI ethics researchers. She didn't quit, she was fired. In 2020, she co-authored a paper exposing biases in large language models, raising ethical concerns about AI's future. A few months later, Margaret Mitchell, co-leader of Google's ethical AI team, was also fired for supporting Gebru and criticism of the company's handling of ethical concerns. Two of Google's most important voices in AI ethics, gone. It sure seemed like questioning AI's risks wasn't welcome at Google. Meanwhile, OpenAI, Microsoft, and Anthropic were hiring. They weren't just pushing AI forward, they were recruiting the very people Google was losing. AI race isn't just about who has the best technology, it's about who has the best minds, and Google was running out of them. Blockbuster had the chance to buy Netflix for $50 million in 2000. They laughed. At the time, Netflix was just mailing DVDs. Streaming didn't even exist yet. But when streaming did appear, Blockbuster dismissed it. They refused to embrace change because it threatened their core business, DVD rentals. Sound familiar? Google is making the same mistake with AI. They weren't just ahead in AI. They built the foundation for it. Google was supposed to own this race. They had the best talent, the most advanced research, and the computing power to dominate AI. But instead of leading the revolution, they hesitated. AI threatened their $200 billion ad business, so they stalled. Meanwhile, OpenAI, Microsoft, and Anthropic moved fast, took bold risks, and surged ahead. And the worst part? Google had every advantage. But they lost because of their own failures, their own bureaucracy, their own culture, their own fear. The same way Google crushed Yahoo in the early 2000s. AI could now crush Google. Because this isn't just about losing an AI race. This is about the future of the internet. And if Google doesn't fix its mistakes fast, they won't just fall behind. They'll become obsolete.